my pronouns are they, them. And this is Cliffside Permaculture. What are you doing up there, crazy? I'm sorry for being a little bit MIA. I have an echo because I put my coffee near my face um, for a few days here. And I want to explain what's been going on because I've just been scrambling at a breakneck pace to continue to stay ahead of all of the raccoons and a couple of little design issues that I really would have had no way to know about. And I'm going to title this one, What They Don't Tell You About Natural Quail Keeping, because, whoa. <laughs> yeah, they're probably happier. But there's so fewer of them. And this has just been a constant shock. I think Roosty's being shunned <laughs> by the younger birds who don't want to be mated. Uh, so, we've lost a couple more birds. The young roosters, um, they're gone. And, I don't know, things are going okay at this point, but we renamed, not this brown bird, but the brown bird behind has a very orange chest, I do believe. And has been renamed Oakland Cadoba, which if you look up Oakland PA Cadoba, you will get that joke. The joke is that that little bird hopped up, I think was wanting to nest on these ledges and then decided to want to nest on top of this and then fell. So this is wired down now because I didn't think I needed to do that. There was a gap. There's not anymore. And the little bird ended up down here. So that's what these feathers are. Is at least half a day of being stuck there. It's a very cuddly bird now. But then there's feathers here that are the raccoon ripping that wire away. And then eating two of the two of the little baby roosters so we got a much smaller group it's almost all hens though I still don't know whether I have roosters or hens in the non feather sexable group which are the back three birds in the box there but all the feather sexable ones that came out that survived apparently they're all girls so once we finally start having eggs, we'll have eggs. I've set this up so that I can almost definitely see all the spaces on Goldilocks when I come out and check. Because uh, that way I know if I should worry. <sighs> and I'm just continually adding more wire. I want to add a clip up here. Um, oh, it looks like I forgot to latch it the rest of the way last night. I could have swore. I walked that like eight times. How did I not? But we still have everybody. So I do a roster in the morning of Gak, Calico, and Argyle. They're in there. This is Brown Brown. That's now Oakland Cadoba. Not that I can necessarily tell the difference between the two brown birds. Oh, wait, you're Oakland Cadoba because you got the cattywampus feathers and you're Brown Brown. Okay. And then we got Roosty. And there's Goldilocks. And the only one missing is inside because I think they bit something toxic and started developing Rhinec. So I have a bird with Rhinec in a isolation cage inside. They have started using the hen hydrator back there, which is great. I love that. We love to see it. I took the alcove off the log because one of the reasons I didn't look harder for brown brown in the morning is because I assumed brown brown was behind who's now Oakland Cadoba. I was just calling them both brown brown because I can't tell them apart. 
So, I think we need to put a leg band on you, Oakland Cordova. But I, there's a little alcove behind that log. It was pretty big and pretty comfortable. Now it's much smaller. I got the writhing tools out and smacked the um, carpenter bee laced section off. Oh, Rusty. Yeah. Excited noises. And that's, uh, yeah, it's been, so everyone was worried that somebody would dig in, but this, this is fine. The problem has been more of raccoons reaching through the walls. So I had this covered real early, but I thought these long gaps behind, so this is that animal fencing. So I thought near the ground, these long gaps are enough for a raccoon to get in up to their armpit and do a whole lot of grabbing around. And I thought this was on good enough with the way I had it and it wasn't. So that was difficult. And apparently then reached down and got around the corner. Don't be fooled. I, a lot of times I call animals people, so if it comes across, which it has in previous videos, that someone did this, I'm referring to a creature, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so there's, there's Oakland Cadoba liking those ledges. Liking the ledges a lot. <laughs> Back in the corner underneath the plant there, can you see? And I think what Oakland Cadoba did was hop, 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 and then there was a gap here, and then more struggle meant more stuck. They were so happy when I found them. I'm amazed they were okay. And I unwired the corner and just opened up the wall panel to let them out. So, they're a very cuddly bird now. Argyle's pretty cuddly too. I did you sleeping like you did? I think they're funny when they sleep with their legs out like that, but it can freak you out. So that, to me, that is my thoughts about what they don't tell you about natural quail keeping. I bet that a lot of these people are just keeping secrets. Because everyone absolutely praised my design on the forum I was on. I was like, oh, that's going to be great. They're going to be so happy. Or... I'm going to lose my whole flock except Roosty, plus four more of the new flock. And then Oakland Cadoba is going to end up reenacting history in the walls of the cage. It, the story is that somebody tried to jump between two buildings to impress their girlfriend, fell between, and the more they wriggled, the farther they went down. And the Cadoba in Oakland, they had to bust through the bricks in the interior wall because the buildings were pretty close together. And it was only like a foot space or something in between. And they had to like jackhammer out the wall to let this person out. <sighs> And so, this was very much a reenactment of history on a quail scale. Ay ay ay. But also, oh, the one last thing that happened that I forgot about just now. I was in here. I was sitting on the little yellow chair, which ended up being very not comfortable, and that log's a lot more comfortable to sit on it. In fact, I think I'm going to add a second log. Um back in that corner I had a whole bunch of these twigs stacked up for them to be able to pick the seeds off well do you remember creakers or orange bird depending on which video you watch I change the names of my birds a lot <sighs> do you remember her well she was back there and there was a tight space and she had her head I was just sitting right there and I, I heard it happen I heard a peep and a jump and then a bunch of flapping she got her head stuck and then got startled by another bird jumped and instantly broke her neck so there are design issues and concerns that really aren't clear 
or readily available in the natural quail keeping community that I want to make sure are out there. And um, I think people are afraid to say it because there's such like a sunshiny, beautiful uh, presentation. And depending on how the group is moderated, you might have a fear of saying this happened in that group. I do. Because I don't know how many stealth PETA people are in there. <laughs> just waiting to troll um huh oakland cadoba you lived through it yeah so i just want to put it here because i know we're a good community and that this is safe but this is what they don't tell you about natural quail keeping which is on the ground with the wood chips and everything else and i'm hoping that between all of the hog nose clips all of the double wiring. I've got the door zipped down the whole way around. Once I can get a clip up there and when I can keep this like that all the time, cause that's really stable, but you can pull up here. So that's why I'd like to have another one up here. Cause then that would be just like a completely locked down door. But I think a raccoon could probably rip the wire apart but my hope is then they eventually start to get stabbed themselves and give up before much damage was done but I do want to hog nose clip a lot of these down to so that it's more snugged and there's less room like more effort to have to pull away huh see they are I feel like they are happier they boink they flap they look happy but they have been through it and other than Oakland, Cadoba, and Argyle, they are really skittish. And I don't blame them. Things with thumbs are dangerous. Things with thumbs are really dangerous. So the panels on the side also were enough initially. So I keep having to up the ante. So I think what I'm going to do is just keep bunkering this over time. Continue with the bunkering process. Because... I feel like every time I think I've succeeded, that's when the raccoon gets one up on me. And he's getting a lot of practice. They all are. I could trap and remove the raccoon by whatever means, you know, by turning it into a fur or by... I can, I've trapped raccoons before, but there's so many raccoons up here. I don't, I don't think that's going to... Oof, I don't think that's going to reduce it. I gonna, don't think that's going to remove my problem in it in, to any extent. So, have the tops and bottoms and seams on every bit of poultry wire double wired down or double looped over. And I have a lot of hog clips and I could certainly use zipping this up again because the hog clips aren't as sturdy as having a whole lot of wire laced through it. The rolls of wire are only like eight, nine bucks. So over time, that'll add up, but I can do like one a month because I don't have all the time in the world to just hang around and super wire down everything. So as your raccoons and or other predators continue to learn you need to keep upgrading this is enough for them to reach through but it's not enough for them to um reach the birds down there so i think that's a little bit helpful because they can't get through but yeah, if you're thinking about natural quail keeping, um, figure out some design that is a little bit less uh, expensive, cool, but once you figure it out, continue to bunker it. Never rest, apparently, because I think every time I rest, I will get overtaken. <laughs> It's easier to make a bunker out of a hutch than it is out of an entire yard cage. 
and that's that's my take home and that is definitely what I didn't know going into this so I hope it helps also keep all the ground clear as much you can I think that that big piece there is good but the piece that that if it's little spaces where they can get their head in tiny and then end up jumping yeah they can kill themselves and you might be right there and there won't be nothing you can do about it because you won't have realized that they're in there getting spooked all right so sorry for another sad video but this is this is important this is the kind of stuff that if you're going to keep quail and you want to do nice by them which a lot of us do and they are i think happier i mean look at them <laughs> i think they're happier but it's been a lot of trauma for both of us all of us huh guys me and all of yous all yin's guys all yin's guys have been through a lot so and me too all right well thanks so much for visiting the cliffside which is over there and uh learning something with me sorry it's not a super happy video we'll do videos on the garden and hanging out inside the quail coop and all of that stuff soon they're really fun to hang with it's really fun to just sit in there and hang with them i sit in there and drink my coffee you know it's they're cute so and it's a beautiful day so i hope you're enjoying it take care cliffhangers this has been permaculture bye